Hello everyone, my name is Bo Alexander and I'm so glad that you're here. Now let me just say how anxious and excited I've been to share this DIY with you all. I've searched for months, literally scouring the shelves of each and every thrift and antique store that I've visited in search of those mid-century modern styled lucite grape clusters. Now I've seen a few of them out and online, but they're typically in more vibrant colors like red, yellow, and green. But if you followed me for some time, you'll know that I tend to decorate my apartment in a more neutral color palette and the clusters in clear, black, and cream tend to be heavily upsold. I'm talking like $250 to $400 a piece. So this got me to thinking, why don't I just find a way to make them myself in a color that I want more affordably? And let me just tell you that I have successfully and I cannot wait to show you how incredible they turned out. I've done the footwork for you all. You can absolutely customize and tailor this DIY to your liking by making them any color that you want. So be sure to follow step by step and stick around to see the finished product. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe down below. Leave me a comment, chat with me, and give this video a thumbs up to let me know that you're enjoying my channel and these weekly adventures. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Botox Now. I post pretty frequently, and this is where you'll find more of my home decor and styling inspiration. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, everyone. So I do just want to give you a little preview as to what you'll be needing to complete this DIY. But I do want to preface that with trial and error, I did make a few adjustments that I'll be sharing. So before attempting this for yourself, please pay attention to each of my suggestions. First and foremost, you absolutely 100% need to be safe when working with resin. Please use gloves, a mask, and work in a well-ventilated area if possible, as the fumes from resin can be damaging to the respiratory system. Next, you will need stir sticks. These can be plastic or wooden and be sure to use something you don't mind throwing away when you've completed this project. And here is where I'll need your undivided attention, my friends. Do not, I repeat, do not use epoxy resin for this project. I thought I was being smart by using epoxy resin because they are odor free and being that it's winter, I can't work outdoors. But this was by far the largest mistake I made on my first attempt at this project. You need to use a polyester resin. I'll be sure to link what I use below, but for a visual, I'll insert the correct products needed here, which are both by the brand Cast and Craft. I used two 32 ounce containers of resin, so 64 ounces total, and one bottle of the Catalyst, which is a product that you have to purchase separately to make the resin cure and harden. I bought both from Michaels, but I think they can be purchased online through Amazon as well. Next, you will need plastic cups to mix your resin in. I bought these from the Dollar Tree. Try to find them as cheaply as possible because those you use will be tossed into the garbage when you're finished with this project. My intention with these squeeze bottles was to pour the resin inside as a funnel, but I thoroughly recommend just using a small size funnel instead, one you don't plan on using for any other purpose. And most importantly, you will need to source clear glass ornaments online. I found these through Walmart. They're two inches wide and used as a mold for the resin to cure inside of. They must be clear glass because we will be shattering each to remove the hardened spheres from and a colored glass bulb will leave residual foiling on the surface. Next, I removed each of the metal caps from the ornaments so that they'd be ready to go when it comes time to pour the resin inside. Now, just to forewarn you, these will heat up as the resin cures, so you do not want to place these on top of a surface that could be easily damaged by the heat that's generated. I kept them in the plastic containers sitting upright, but even those melted slightly and became somewhat warped. I have my work area set up with a plastic bag beneath me. As I said before, work in a well-ventilated area if possible and be sure to wear your mask and gloves as you do not want to breathe in these concentrated fumes. Now I did just want to quickly show you the correct product to buy should you be inclined to complete this DIY project. I used two of these 32 ounce containers of the Cast and Craft Clear Polyester Casting Resin, and each can will make roughly 13 of the resin spheres, or what we'll be using as grapes. Be sure to use a coupon too. I believe I was able to save around 25% off each container at Michael's, bringing them from $39 down to around $29 each. And as far as the catalyst goes, the directions are a bit confusing, so to simplify, you'll want to use roughly 6 drops per ounce of resin. Keep in mind, you'll only use a fraction of the catalyst and have plenty left over for a future project. Now one critical piece of equipment that you will need is something to measure the resin with. You could likely use a measuring cup, but when working with a liquid, I just found it easiest to use a scale so that I could be precise in my measurements when adding the catalyst drops. 
I did my best to carefully pour the resin into the cup in increments of 8 ounces. I discovered that 8 ounces filled roughly 3 of the glass ornaments completely and was a manageable amount of the mixture to work with at a time. I tried to make more than enough of the resin spheres or grapes, 26 in total from the two cans of resin, so just note that if you want a smaller scale grape cluster, you could get away with using less. Because I'm working in 8 ounce increments, I'm carefully making sure to slowly add in the drops. Again, 6 drops per ounce for a total of 48 drops in this particular mixture. This is crucial to a successful outcome, too little drops won't allow the resin to fully cure, and too many drops can cause the product to overheat and crack. It's a science, but I promise you it's worth the effort. The resin needs to be mixed for a total of 3 minutes. I actually set a timer on my phone and continuously stirred clockwise, counterclockwise, scraping the sides and the bottom to be sure that the catalyst is completely blended with the resin. You don't want any pockets of resin or catalyst to be untouched. Another thing to keep in mind, some resins tend to bubble. Thankfully this particular brand did not at all, so you'll want to be sure not to mix too hastily as it can add air to the mixture and cause bubbling. Now this is where that miniature funnel will come in handy. You have to carefully pour the mixture into each of the clear glass ornaments, and you want to be sure that you fill it completely, but just below the neck so that each is perfectly round. If you fill up to the neck, it's not the end of the world, but it may just be a bit more unsightly. I do want to point out that the funnel isn't necessary, you can just pour directly from the cup itself. It's a little bit more tedious, but I did it the first time around so I know it's possible. Also, don't worry too much if you happen to spill any resin on the outside of the ornament. They're only being used as a mold and will be broken and discarded in a future step. The biggest thing to remember is that these will need at least 24 hours to cure completely and must remain in a space that is around 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Once they're cured, they'll actually shrink ever so slightly and pull away from the glass, and you can actually hear the resin sphere rattle around inside the glass ornament to know they're ready to be removed. This was the major problem I encountered with the epoxy resin. Instead of self-releasing, it actually bonded with the glass ornament and completely defeated the purpose of this project. This part is just a little dangerous. I definitely caution you to wear the thickest rubber gloves you have available, and to work in an area that you can easily sweep or vacuum afterward just to be sure no stray glass shards remain. You may even want to do this outdoors or over a garbage bin to be extra cautious. You will see that I took two of the ornaments in hand and essentially smacked them into each other to shatter the glass and leave behind just the smooth resin sphere that we'll be using as grapes. You'll have to do this for each. Again, just be very careful and wear protective eyewear if you have any available. This is in no way a children-friendly project. It's definitely intended for adults, so I just want to throw that out there as well. Once you've completely removed all of the resin spheres from the glass, be sure to wipe them free of any stray fragments and discard the broken shards appropriately. Once the resin spheres have been cleaned thoroughly, they should look something like this. I was actually quite impressed at how well these turned out. There was no discoloration, no bubbling, they completely cured through in the 24 hour time period, and looked just like glass or crystal, which is the look I was going for. Now, I used a 3 32nd size drill bit and a power drill to make a 1 4 inch hole down into each sphere. You'll need to make sure that whatever sized hole you drill will compensate for the size of wire you choose. I'll insert a photo of the Panacea cloth wire I used here. I actually bought mine from Hobby Lobby, but I'll be sure to insert a few options in the description box below. Keep in mind it is a cloth covered wire, not an exposed wire. It may not make a huge difference, but in terms of presentation, I found this to be the most appealing and similar to what was used decades ago. You could probably insert the wire into each resin sphere a couple of hours into the curing process once it's semi-hardened to omit this step, but because I wanted to ensure that the wire was not inserted at an angle or too far down into the sphere, I found this to be the best solution. Now, I wanted to try and find a branch that was substantial and looked similar to that of a grapewood vine. 
I wasn't able to locate one at any craft store I had nearby, and I didn't want a chance at sight unseen online, so I bought this Java Wood Bird Perch from PetSmart for around $15. I manipulated it just a bit and sawed it down to size. To save money, you can use whatever you have in your own backyard, just make sure the branch is workable and sized to your liking. While you still have your power drill out, you'll want to make holes all along the branch and be sure that the holes you drill are sized wide enough for two of the wire stems to pass through. I believe I used a 1 8 inch drill bit to achieve this and once I was done and the holes were drilled, I sanded the surface and actually spray painted the branch with matte black spray paint which I'm sure comes as no surprise to those of you who have watched my upcycles and DIYs for some time. As you can see, I painted the stick and let it dry completely overnight. I feel the black gives it a more modern appeal and looks more visually appealing when the resin grapes are added. A lot of you actually ask me about the spray paint that I use for my DIYs and I typically only use these two products which are the Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover Paint and Primer in flat black and the matte clear coat to serve as a protective layer or sealant. Now, for the resin grapes I used a combination of both Crazy Glue, which is the standard liquid super glue, and a Gorilla Brand Super Glue Gel to adhere the Panacea cloth wire into the holes that we drilled. I actually planned on using E6000 glue as it's known for a super strong hold, but in this case it was too thick and congealed irregularly and was just not suitable for this project. You'll need to repeat this step for each individual resin grape. Again, I made 26 of them, so take your time and be sure to let them set for at least a few good hours untouched before assembling your grape cluster. I left them overnight just to be sure they had completely hardened and would be ready to manipulate. Now, you can see here that I've gotten a head start on assembling the grape cluster itself. A few things to keep in mind, I worked from the bottom of the stem towards the top in a reverse pyramid formation, so one single grape at the bottom and I want to say I worked up to around 5 towards the top. In most of the holes that we drilled into the stem, I inserted one resin grape through either side and wrapped the wire around the base a few times just to make sure they were secured in place. You'll see that I left the green panacea wire intact while I manipulated and arranged the resin grapes just to be sure that I could go back if need be and remove or situate it as I saw fit. It was not until I was completely satisfied with the arrangement of all 26 grapes in the cluster that I went back with my wire cutters and clipped off the ends. I'll be honest, this did take some time and there's no rhyme or reason to the way in which you can assemble your cluster of grapes. Do what feels right, and most importantly, try to remember to have fun in the process. Alright you guys, now here they are. Look how incredible these turned out. You guys, I'm so excited. This was my very first time working with resin, and I have to say I didn't expect it to go this well, and I'll be honest, it actually didn't. So the first time around I did this, I tried to use an epoxy resin, because epoxy resin, just from what I've read online, tends to be a little less fumy. It's not as strong of a scent, and because I'm working in the dead of winter, I just didn't feel comfortable doing this outside because it does need to be temperature controlled. They do need to set for 24 hours between I think it's like 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So I tried like I said with an epoxy resin and the problem with that I didn't really disclose it in the actual footage itself but the problem with the epoxy resin is that it adhered to the glass ornaments. It stuck to the sides of the ornaments. I could not bust them out whereas with the polyester resin they do shrink just ever so slightly and they pull away from the sides. So this, you guys, it was an absolute win. This is a more modern take on like a mid-century styled craft. I guess back in like the 1950s and 60s, a lot of women would make these at home. And to this day, you can still find those pieces selling on websites like Etsy on the secondhand market. You can find originals. But like I said before, it's really hard to find them in more neutral colors that can blend in seamlessly with any decor aesthetic or any decor style. I chose to just keep them clear as the resin is because I have a lot of glass and crystal decor accessories all around my apartment and I just thought that they were so beautiful in this clear form but they have different drops that 
you can add to the resin mixture and you can turn them nearly whatever color you want. Price wise, I do want to say that this was probably around $100, but you could absolutely make these for a lot less. I paid $15, I want to say, for this stick. You could go find a stick out, I mean, literally you could find a stick outside, and I probably should have done that in the many forests that we have around, but I decided to visit a pet store to get this one because I just wasn't sure that I was going to find one that I liked, and again, for the sake of this DIY, I just wanted to make sure that I had all the bases covered. Pieces like this, you can find them readily made and readily available to purchase from Kathy Kuo Home. You can find them at Williams Sonoma. But again, they're going to be like $250 to $400 depending on the color and the size. I wanted mine to be pretty substantial and for this color to blend so well with the decorative items and accessories that I already have out on display, I needed to make these myself. I needed to make them tailored to my home decor aesthetic. So I'm super stoked again just with the way that they turned out. I'm so happy they look absolutely absolutely stunning. If you decide to take this project on in your own home, be sure to tag me over on Instagram. Send me pictures. I cannot wait to see your rendition. So that is it for this week's video, my friends. Be sure to leave me a comment below and let me know if you enjoy and love this beautiful grape cluster as much as I do. Hit the thumbs up button to like this video and let me know that you enjoyed seeing this DIY project. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and accompany me on this weekly home decor journey. Follow me over on Instagram at Botox now for more day-to-day -day posts and inspiration and be sure to hit that notification bell so that you won't miss an upcoming video. I hope you all have the best day and until next time, bye!